Hello everyone and thanks for tuning into part two of the third winter 2021-2022 update from Gaz Weathervid. So here we go again, it's time to bring you uh, more winter data, part two of winter updates where we're focusing on the analog side of things uh, of course. So uh, yeah, we're going to be doing summer to winter uh, analogs this week, uh, direct follow on from last week when we did August to uh, winter analogs. So uh, we're going to be looking at the wider summer temperature and precipitation uh, and uh, um, winter data. So I shall get on that for you uh, very shortly. Just say that part one of this uh, third winter update was released yesterday on uh, Sunday. Have not yet watched it. It's a very, very interesting uh, watch. So do check it out. You can access it through the uh, playlist on the Gas Weather's YouTube homepage for winter updates. So have a look at it. And uh, looking at things like sea surface temperature anomalies, uh, solar activity, Eurasian snow cover, Arctic sea ice extinct, etc., etc., etc. And uh, yeah, have a look at that if you have not yet done so. I hope you having a lovely uh, Monday evening. Uh, so, well, thank you so much for uh, tuning in on this Monday evening or whenever you're watching this uh, part two of the third winter update. Uh, please like, share, subscribe on all of the videos. Thank you so much uh, for doing that. We did reveal yesterday uh, in part one of this uh, of this winter update uh, when we're going to be releasing our winter forecast. So have a look at part one uh, for that. And uh, I'm just going to say thank you so much to uh, Rich of the incredible uh, winter updates gear. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to Rich. I love the gear. I love this year's winter updates gear. So thank you so much, Richard, for the, for the, for the gear. And thank you so much to Shrine as well, my good friend Shrine Brewing, uh, getting all of the years together for me. For this update, incredible. Thank you so much to Shrine and thank you so much uh, to Richard uh, as well. It's unbelievable. Thank you so much both. Uh, right, okay, so uh, let's move over to the CT page then at the UK Met. This is it. So uh, this is shown uh, the uh, monthly CTs for 2021 so far. We can see that uh, for June, we came out with a CT of 15.5. For July, we came out with a CT of 17.7. .7. Both of those months were one, uh, one and a half degrees or around one and a half degrees uh, above average. And then we have August coming out at 15.8, which was very, very close to the 61 to 19, 90 average and actually a little bit below average for 81 to 2010. It means that overall the CT for uh, summer 2021 came out at 16 point three 16.3 was the overall CT number for summer 2021 quite a warm summer uh, really certainly you know uh, within the top 20 or so uh, warmest I think for the for the CT. And so it means that uh, for uh, this update, we're going to be looking at winters following summers with a CET range of 16.1 to 16.5. So let's have a look then. This is our first summer. Uh, no, it's not. It's our first winter. Well, it's kind of our first summer as well. It's the summer of 1857, but it's our first winter following a summer with a CET range of 16.1 to 16.5. It's the summer of 1850. It's winter of 1857, 1858. This one is uh, mainly high pressure dominated with above average height sitting over and to the east of the country. Anticyclonic uh, winter. Could be quite a cold winter. It's not, I don't think it's particularly uh, Arctic based cold with this, but of course we're back in the Victorian era. So we've got that area of high pressure sat over the country. There's bound to be lots of fog. And uh, so probably quite a cold winter, you know, from for frosty, foggy weather. Our next winter is going to be 1859, 1860. It's a very different winter, much more unsettled with lots of low pressure dominating uh, across much of Europe as well. Have got a mid-Atlantic ridge in play, but we could pull some cold air into that trough of low pressure uh, sometime. I think the main thing with that one is that it is a very, very wet uh, winter indeed. Our next winter, following a summer with a CT range of 16.1 to 16.5, is the summer of 1870, 1871. This one also looking very unsettled with lots of low pressure across Western Europe. Has got a bit of blocking to the north, but not overly strong. So I think, again, the main thing about that winter is that it is very unsettled and quite wet across Western Europe. 
Then we've got Winter of 1887-1888 showing up uh, next. This one has a mid-Atlantic ridge going back to northern blocking with uh, below average heights, low pressure across southern parts of Europe. We drive wind in from uh, the northeast. That's quite a cold winter and that's a particularly cold spell around Christmas and New Year of uh, 1887 to 1888. But overall that is, that is a cold winter. Uh, then we have the winter of 1893-1894. This is a mild, wet and windy winter, really with low pressure in the North Atlantic and into uh, western parts of Europe. So yeah, proper mild, wet and windy sort of winter for that one. And then we've got uh, quite a long gap through to 1921-1922. So next time we have a uh, summer with a CT range of 16.1 to 16.5. It's actually the summer of 1921. Uh, winter of 1921-1922 is mild. Most of the 1920s winters were, particularly early on in the decade, uh, so a mild, wet and windy winter. I think it is quite a cold winter across much of Central Europe, um, but for us, we just stay on, on the mild side of jet stream, really, for UK and Ireland. That's quite a mild, wet, windy winter. And we've got winter of 1934-1935. This one has a little bit of high pressure to the northwest and also to the northeast. We blow a pressure through here. I think overall that's generally quite a mildish sort of winter again, though, uh, for 34-35. And we've got 35, 36. This is another pretty mild winter. We blow pressure in off the Atlantic along the jet stream. Wet winter, that one, in 1935 and uh, 1936 as well. It does have quite strong blocking uh, around Greenland, interestingly. But I think overall, this is another relatively Atlantic-driven and mild western winter, as many of the winters in the first four decades of the 20th century tended to be. A uh, pretty long gap then through to 1949, 1950. This is another mild winter uh, coming at the end of the 1940s, which is a cold decade. But right at the very end, we have a run of milder winters, actually, uh, after 1947. The, you know, the, the cold and snow of 1947. The rest of winters, 1940s, are mild. And this one takes us from the 40s into the 50s. It's a mild, wet uh, winter, unsettled Atlantic-driven zone winter for 1949-1950. Our next winter is more interesting from a cold perspective, following a summer with a CT range of 16.1, 16.5. This is summer of 1955-1956. This one uh, with high pressure away to our northwest, low pressure to our south and east, bringing in wind from the east. It's relatively mild in the first half of the winter uh, during December 1955, and even into January to some degree. But it gets much, much colder at the end of January. Real freezing cold conditions take over late January of 1956. And February 1956 is severely cold. One of the uh, coldest Februarys on record. The sub zero CT. Our next winter, I mean, it's a long gap, uh, through to 1984, 1985. So we go from we go from 1955 to uh, 1984 before we have a CT range of 16.1 to 16.5 again. This is another cold winter for 1984-1985. This is a genuinely cold winter, you know, January and February included with this one, with high pressure to our north and northeast, low pressure into the south and winds are in from uh, the east. Has a very cold January, almost a sub-zero city Jan January, just not quite. December 84 is relatively mild until Christmas, and then it gets colder between Christmas and a new year, and then, and then it really is like uh, in, uh, in in the new year, sort of January 1985, that the cold sets in, and then it is it's cold on and off throughout the rest of winter with regular snowfalls. One of the classic cold 1980s winters. Same can't be said for the next winter though. This is 1989-1990. Uh, so this one is a very mild, wet, and stormy winter. With deep low pressure in the Atlantic, regular bouts of gale force winds during January and February of 1990, but also exceptionally mild. And then we're back to another cold one for 1990, 1991. So uh, this one has below average heights to our west and uh, southwest. It has high pressure over Scandinavia, high pressure gives it away 
uh, a little bit because, uh, yeah, that Scandi High sort of takes over in February. The first half of winter in December 1990 is relatively mild, but does have a classic snowstorm uh, in, in the Midlands in particular. Uh, I think it's the 8th of uh, December 1990. But the rest of December 1990 is generally mild uh, and quite stormy. Um, and then it gets colder and drier through January. And then it really gets very, very severely cold in February of 1991. The classic uh, easterly, you know, from the, from the Urals and, uh, and lots and lots of snow. Back to mile for the next winter, it's 1994-1995, so this one again, low pressure is to the north, high pressure is to the south, winds in from the west. Was 94-95 a little bit of a teaser? I'm not sure, but it does have a few colder snaps in January of 1995, and there's some snow in the north, and it has, it has quite a cold March actually in uh, 1995 as well, but generally the winter of 94-95 is a very mild, wet and windy winter. 2001-2002 uh, comes up next, following a summer CT range of 16.1 to 16.5. This one with higher pressure across generally western parts of Europe. It has a bit of a front loaded, so that's quite a coldish December up to uh, the new year and the start of January. Cold uh, conditions on and off. Uh, and then January gets generally milder and wet and windier, culminating in an exceptionally mild, wet and windy uh, February of 2001. We've got 2004-2005 showing up next. So this one has higher pressure out to our west. The wind's coming around. High pressure from uh, the northwest. Um, so this one uh, is uh, is a bat loaded wind. It has a white Christmas uh, in 2004. Has an exceptionally mild spell through the first half of January 2005. And then starts getting colder uh, from late January through February. Now there is quite a protracted cold and snowy spell actually sort of late February and into early March of 2005. And then 2005-2006 is our next uh, winter following the summer with a city range of 16.1 to 16.5. This looks like it should be a very cold winter. It is not. It is not a very cold winter. It looks like it should be with lots of high pressure to the north and low pressure to the south. And you look about and think we're driving winds, you know, from the east and northeast. It's a severely cold winter. Actually, it isn't. Uh, it's generally a failed winter, you know, uh, uh, quite mild on and off. Um, through much of it. It does get colder later on though, so late February into March again, um, you know, it does get quite cold and wintry, but really for the synoptic setup for the geopotential height anomaly, a uh, bit of a disappointing winter that one. You would think it would be a lot colder uh, looking at that. Uh, then we've got 2013-2014, nothing more to say about this winter other than it's exceptionally wet, mild and stormy. Um, <laughs> that's about all you can say uh, about that one. Regular gales, regular rain. Um, it's that kind of winter, very mild, wet, windy and stormy for 13-14. 2016-17 is a mild and dry winter with above average heights over uh, the UK and much of Northern Europe. 2017-18 is the beast from the east winter. Notice how many of these years are occurring in more recent years. Quite interesting, isn't it? Um, so this one, uh, you know, it does have higher pressure blocking up here around Svobod into the northwest of Russia uh, with lower pressure through here. A uh, little bit on off, there's, uh, there's a colder spell in December of 2017, uh, cold snap through January 2018, and then late in February and into March of 2018, the beast bites, and uh, we get that classic really cold, severely cold and snowy spell late in February of uh, 2018, when the beast from the east is unleashed. But it only lasts a few days, and then it sort of fades out, but we get a mini beast later on in March of 2018. Uh, we've got Polar Vortex of Doom next. Uh, this is 2019, 2020. Just look at those uh, below average heights that we have there around Greenland and Iceland combined with the above average heights across southern Europe. Very, very strong westerly jet stream and Atlantic dream and flow. Looking really zonal, uh, mild, wet, windy and stormy. Uh, for the winter of 2019-2020. It just went on and on and on and on. Just did not stop through the whole of the winter. And, uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, Polar Vortex of Doom 
in all of its glory. And then the final time we have a summer with, summer with a CT range of 16.1, 16.5. It's actually last summer, 2020. And, uh, of course, this is the classic teaser. It's a classic teaser chart, isn't it? With your above average heights uh, within the high latitudes, almost delivering us a very cold winter. But the below average heights are low pressure, just not far enough south enough to uh, allow in those really cold east or northeast winds. It's a near-miss winter, but actually in northern Scotland and Scotland generally does get quite a cold winter. Right, so let's start putting all of that together then. Miss out all summers combined are looking following, uh, uh, miss out all, what am I talking about? Miss out all December's combined are <laughs> looking. It's been a very long day. Miss out all December's combined are looking following uh, <laughs> summer with a CT range of 16.1 to 16.5. It's generally mild, uh, wet and windy for the December's overall. Uh, you know, all of them put together Atlantic driven, low pressure to our north and west and winds coming in. From a westerly direction, so a mild and wet December. January, or January's combined, uh, look like that. Much more interesting, potentially from a cold perspective. It looks like we've got high pressure over Scandinavia and back to Svobard. The uh, low pressure is pushed further south. So you could envisage that these Januarys may have a little bit of cold potential from the east, um, particularly. And then all February's combined uh, shows that scanning high sort of fading away. And uh, we just go back to generally a mild, a wet signal for February's with low pressure in off the Atlantic into Western Europe along with uh, very much a westerly jet stream. And all winters combined following summer with a CT range of 16.1 to 16.5 look unsettled with below average heights across Western Europe generally mild and wet through Western Europe. There is higher pressure up here and it's mostly uh you know it's mostly january that could deliver some colder weather but overall it is quite a mild winter signal just narrowing things down to look at the years post 1950 uh this is how they come out following a summer with a city range of 16.1 to 16.5 uh and still it's westerly but not as wet not as unsettled but lower pressure tends to get pushed further north as the azores high sort of strengthens and uh, ridges to the south. So it's a bit of a drier signal, but it's still a very mild, uh, or it's an even milder signal, really, uh, for, for the Decembers. Uh, but January is not very strange. It's all January's combined following summer CT range of 16.1 to 16.5 post-1950. Still with that Scandinavian high suggested, and going back to Svobard, uh, <laughs> with below pressure around Iceland, and also across southern Europe. Um, so, so a little bit hard to decipher with those Januaries. But I think there is a little bit of cold potential with some of them anyway. Uh, you know, there, there is a chance of some easterly winds with some of those Januaries. Uh, but for February, it doesn't make much difference. All February's combined just goes back to this westerly mild type pattern. So it's definitely January. It's like the focus for potentially the coldest weather uh, following this uh, summer CT range. Bear in mind, you know, there are uh, years in there that are deviating from this. So we've got 1991 in the pack for starters and 1956. They are both severely cold uh, Januarys indeed. I suspect, uh, February's I should say, indeed. I suspect it's the latter years that are skewing this a little bit. The run from like 2002 to uh, 2021 is probably skewing that a little bit, but further back in time, and not that far back, you know, only back to 1991, further back in time, there are some very cold uh, Februarys as well in included uh, in this. And this is how all winters combined are looking finally for this set, uh, following summer CNC range of 16.1 to 16.5. Overall, it's still uh, post-1950. Overall, still uh, uh, an unsettled signal with a below average height sort of over to West Country. We do see that high pressure lurking towards the northeast. It tells us that, you know, there is the possibility of something colder with some of these years, especially the ones that are a little bit uh, further back. And that's it for the first part of this uh, third winter 2021-2022 update part two. <laughs> I'm going to pause the video there. We've not done though yet. We're going to have a look at England and Wales precipitation for the summer uh, after this. 
And uh, so I shall see you very, very shortly. But you go stretch your legs, get yourself a cup of tea. Maybe, you know, something a little bit strong if you're watching this on Monday evening. Uh, and, uh, and I shall see you back in around two seconds' time. And we'll go through our second set of analogues for this third Winter 21-22 update part two. I'll see you soon. Okay, we're back. We're ready to resume the second part of the third winter 2021-2022 update part two. I got that out okay, didn't I? This is a bit complicated, isn't it? Splitting the uh, winter updates into two parts and pausing them. Uh, you know, so it's a job getting your head around it, but I think I got that okay. Uh, so uh, I hope I did anyway. If you enjoyed the video, then please smash your like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. You'll be able to see future web content, including future winter updates, if you do that. And uh, drop a comment after you watch the video and let us know what you think about uh, part two of the third winter 2021-2020. 22 update. Been interesting so far. So I hope you're enjoying it. We're going to move on. Sorry, of course, uh, looking at the CT. Going to move on now to England and Wales uh, precipitation for summer. So let's go back to the uh, UK Met. And uh, here we go. Let me just want to zoom this in a little bit. So uh, let's do it. Let's do it, shall we? We're going to do it. We're zooming in right now. We're going to do it. Uh, there we go. Uh, right. <laughs> A little bit giddy, a little bit giddy tonight. Uh, I'll put webcam back on in a second. Uh, right. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry, buddy. What happened to me in the break? Have I been on the magic water in that little break? I wonder. You're all wondering. What's he been up to in that break, aren't you? Uh, right. Okay. So this is the England Wales precipitation uh, page from uh, the UK Met Office. Uh, England Wales uh, precipitation uh, goes, it's an index that uh, uh, shows uh, monthly precipitation all the way back to 1766. It goes back a very, very long time ago indeed. Right, let's come on down then. We're going to come on down. We're going to have a look at uh, the current year. So 2021 uh, comes out uh, like that. So we begin, of course, with a very wet January in that uh, little bit of a teaser. Uh, so what we find as we go uh, through the year is that we get uh, we get June coming out with an England Wales precipitation of 59.5 millimetres, uh, July uh, uh, 90.4 millimetres, and uh, August comes out at 54. 0.6 uh, millimetres. Uh, so uh, that's where we come out with uh, England Wales precipitation uh, for this uh, summer. And so it means that we finish up with a precipitation range of 193 to 215 millimetres. Which, of course, places 2021 slap bang in the middle of that range. Okay, so I'm going to turn the webcam back on, I think for this uh, final set, here we go then, I've returned, hello, uh, right, so we're going to have some fun, let's have a look at uh, the first winter man, this is uh, how, uh, so we're looking at um, winters following summers with an England Wales precipitation range of 193 to 215. Millimeters. Uh, first winter is the winter of 1840-1841. This is a cold winter to start us off with lots of high latitude blocking, particularly centered around Iceland and Greenland, and low pressure is pushed south along the jet stream as well. Of course, we're going to be driving in easterly winds uh, with that one. So that's a bitterly cold uh, winter to start us off in 1840-1841. Our next winter is going to be 1842-1843. This one with lots of low pressure across northern and western Europe. There is blocking, but it's more towards the Canadian side of the Arctic and Greenland, which means that overall it's probably not a particularly cold winter um, with, uh, uh, you know, winds off the Atlantic quite a bit. But there is potential there for colder snaps at the very least. Our next winter is going to be 1867, 1868. This is a mild and dry winter. 
uh, with low pressure to the north, high pressure to the southwest, the winds coming around that high pressure from a west southwest direction. That's a mild but drier winter for 1867-1868. We've got 1889-1890 uh, showing up next. So this is quite a cold winter with high pressure over Scandinavia and winds coming in from the east. That's a dry but cold winter for 1889-1890. We've got 1893, 1894. It's back. It was there in the first set of Bandlocks. It's back again uh, for this set with uh, low pressure again to the northwest. Winds in off the Atlantic. This is a mild, wet and windy win winter for 1893 to 1894. 1901, 1902 is also quite a mild, wet winter. It does again have a blocking signal, but the blocking is more centred towards the Canadian side of the Arctic of Greenland, which means we're playing based on the, the mild side of jet stream and the mild side of Brock. Probably one of those winters has a negative NAO AO combination, and we still, even with that, come away mild because the block and the trough just doesn't quite line up correctly to give us uh, a cold winter. A pretty long gap then, through to 1916, 1917. This is one of the coldest winters in the first 40 years of the uh, 20th century. There aren't many of them, but this is one of them. Uh, quite a severe winter in the middle of the First World War, with high pressure centred around Greenland, and low pressure with projection for southwards winds in from the east. That is a genuinely cold, uh, actually quite severe winter, with lots of snow. Imagine what it would have been like in the trenches during uh, that winter. It would have been grim, wouldn't it? Uh, America got winter of 1918-1919 uh, showing up next. So it sounds quite a cold early part to the winter, and that's indicated by all of the high pressure within, you know, high latitudes. There is blocking there. Uh, later on in winter, though, it starts to get uh, a little bit milder, I think. And they've got winter of 1943-1944. So another long gap uh, then through to 1943-1944. This one is a mild and dry winter with high pressure just to our west-southwest. Around the high pressure, we bring in the winds from off the Atlantic. So just generally relatively mild and dry with that one. 1944-1945 uh, is the next time we have an England Wales Protection range of uh, 193, 215 millimetres, just one winter on. And this one has a cold January, uh, actually, but a very mild February. So this is a bit of a strange winter with a mid-Atlantic ridge and blocking. Top of low pressure just here. So yes, it does have quite a severe cold January, actually, in 1945. And then it flips into an exceptionally mild February in uh, 1945. 1952-1953 uh, shows up next. It's quite a coldish winter with uh, high pressure out to our west. We tend to be in from the north uh, from the north a lot of time. So I think it does have regular cold snaps in that winter. Uh, they've got 1969-1970. This is quite a cold winter, especially late on. So it has below average heights to our east and south with the mid-Atlantic ridge. Again, extending back to northern blocking winds in from a northerly or northeasterly direction. Relatively mild early on in December of 1969. But then through January, February, March 1970, just gets progressively colder. And finishing up, you know, with really quite a severely cold and stormy spell, actually, by the beginning of March 1970. We've got 1970, 1971 showing up uh, as our next winter. This one with high pressure to the north and low pressure to the south. Has easterly winds and a white Christmas uh, in December, but then the rest of the winter goes generally uh, mild. So that's like a front loading winter. Uh, we've got 1977, 1978. Loads of 1970s with this, interestingly. 1977, 1978 is our next one. This is a bit of a teaser winter. Uh, so this one with the below average heights to the west, south of the country, blocking around Greenland, gesturing for southwards. So this is generally mild early on in uh, in the winter. December 1977 is quite mild. January 78 is, is, is stormy and gets cold at times. And then February 78 has really quite a cold spell. You know, actually quite severe for, for a week or so during the middle of February 1978 before it gets milder 
uh, again. So very on off, very much teasing us uh, with Carl Weather, uh, maybe setting up our next winter. And here is that winter. So next time we have an Ingram Whale precipitation range of 193, 215 millimetres is in uh, in the summer is uh, is 1978. Here's a winter of 78, 79. It's a winter of discontent. It has blocking centred over Greenland. We send the jet stream southwards into Spain and we bring in those easterly winds. It's the last time we have a sub-zero CT January. The last time we have a severely cold January. Uh, but the CT is in 1979, so long ago uh, now. And uh, there it is, following on uh, from that summer with an Ingrid Whale precipitation range of 193 to 215 millimetres. Our next summer is 91.92. Nothing more to say about this other than it is extraordinarily dull and boring winter with high pressure just sat over Western uh, Europe. There's not much more to say about it other than it's incredibly tedious winter. Probably the most tedious winter of my life, or certainly up there with one of them, which is day after day after day stuck under anticyclonic gloom and generally mild as well. Uh, winter of 1993-1994 is our next one. So this is another one of those 1990s winters that generally pretty mild. Although, actually, this has quite a few cold snaps. So not a cold winter, but it does have cold snaps. Um, around Christmas, there's, there's quite a potent, uh, short-lived cold snap. And then particularly in February of 1994, uh, we, we get some cold weather, some east winds and some snow. Otherwise, a relatively mild winter, but for a 1990s winter, it's a colder end of the range, actually. Uh, and then we've got 2001-2002. It's back. It showed up earlier on. Uh, the CT is back again for England Wales Plantation for this summer. So 2002, obviously, was... Um, 2001, I should say, was obviously quite a close-ish uh, match to the summer that we just experienced in terms of the CT and and also England and Wales uh, precipitation. I say this one has quite a coldish uh, December with uh, cold saps coming and going. And then January and February go uh, a great deal milder. And that's the last one. So let's start putting it all together then. This is how all December's combined are looking following an England and Wales precipitation range of 193, 215 millimetres in the summer. So, again, we get this mid-Atlantic ridge going up towards Greenland uh, with below average heights to our south. Definite cold potential with these Decembers. Uh, winds in from an east or northeasterly direction. You could certainly envisage there's a chance of cold weather in those Decembers. All January's combined following an England-Wales uh, summer precipitation range of 193, 215 millimetres. Again, shows higher pressure around Greenland, but that's going more towards the Canadian side with lower pressure across Western uh, Europe. Could still be some cold potential, but not as clear-cut as, as we have, uh, you know, not as clear-cut as having, having December. So so maybe the cold sort of phase out. It just goes milder and wetter in the Januarys. And then all Februarys combined uh, look like that. Um, so again, the blocking is fading over time. Low pressure in off the Atlantic and into Northern Europe as well. Uh, but it looks like Chesley pushed quite a long way southwards, though, uh, with this. So, so maybe this is one of those uh, strange months where it could be cold from the Atlantic. You know, you could send a jet stream on the northwest southeast alignment a lot of the time with those uh, Februarys. I think the clearest cut cold month, though, is definitely December. All winters combined, uh, following an England and Wales precipitation range in the summer of uh, 193 to 215 millimetres, looks like that. Does have a blocking signal around Greenland. It does have the below average heights of the south. It's primarily, the blocking anyway, is primarily down to what's happening in the December's vote. So a front-loaded winter probably favoured here uh, with this. Uh, let's just narrow things down. Narrow things down. Let's look at years after 1950, finally, and then we're going to be done. So uh, this is how all December's combined are looking following an England and Wales uh, summer precipitation range of 193 to 215 millimetres. It's still a cold signal, even after 1950. Still generally a cold signal with the uh, above average heights in the Atlantic up to Greenland and the below average heights moving more towards the south and east of Europe. We could bring in the wind from the northeast uh, and the east with that. So definite chance, possibility, potential for cold weather in the Decembers. 
or January is combined, perhaps look a little bit more interesting, actually, compared to the overall package, which is perhaps a bit surprising, given that uh, this is, like, more relevant to the modern era, which should be mild uh, a lot of the time. But it looks like a jet stream uh, with these Janus after 1950 tends to be further samples, but blocking is weakening, but is still there to some degree around Scandinavia. Um, so, yeah, it's a little bit 50-50, but I reckon overall the January is probably still favour uh, a relatively cold outcome. Bear in mind, we do have 1979 in there as well, which, as I say, is the last time we had a sub-zero CT uh, for January. And then February, again, it's that same idea, but Jetson looks like it's rising northwards a little bit. We lose the, we lose the blocking. So probably bringing in low pressure off the Atlantic and a, a mild or wetter signal uh, for the February. Bear in mind again, like February 1979 wasn't as cold as January, but it was pretty cold. Had it had it had plenty of cold and snowy weather in that February. 1978 is actually the coldest month of the winter of uh, of uh, 1977-78. So there's exceptions to the rule, of course there are. Um, but overall, I think we say that December has the clearest cut cold signal and February probably the mildest uh, signal and January somewhere in betwixt, in between. Uh, and then finally, this is how all winters combined are looking following England and Wales summer precipitation range of 193 to 215 millimetres post-1950. Yes, it's a cold winter signal overall because you have blocking around Greenland and low pressure with the jet stream is for uh, So yes, it is a cold signal. Bear in mind, the most clear-cut cold month is December and, and then it begins to fade out. So it does kind of favour a front-loaded winter uh, to, to some degree. Right, that's it. That is uh, part uh, that is uh, part two of the third uh, winter update done. Uh, so that's that's like the third winter update complete. Wow, we're getting through them now, aren't we? We're on our way. So uh, yes, three updates in, and uh, and uh, we will move on to the fourth update for you next weekend. And of course, uh, part one, uh, the fourth fourth winter. Uh, 2021 2022 update will begin with the uh, uh, with the swingometer with the gas over swingometer and you'll get to see how this update you know both parts part one part two has moved the swingometer or indeed if it has moved it um and you'll see that as the first thing that we look at at the beginning of uh, of the fourth winter update Right, uh, please like the video if you enjoyed it. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. You're going to be able to see future weather content if you uh, do that, including future winter updates. And uh, drop a comment and let us know uh, what you think. For the third winter 2021-2022 update in two parts, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.